As an intermediate level chess player, I had mostly stopped blundering my pieces in one move and was starting to spot simple tactics more quickly. But in a lot of middle game positions, I realized I wasn't sure how to coordinate my pieces and make good plans. One thing I wish I had known is the concept of targets. Targets are enemy pieces or squares that you want to attack. Ideally, you will direct all available pieces at that target and win the piece or control the square. In this video, we're going to practice spotting targets and coming up with a winning plan. In my own chess improvement, I found that just having the word target in my thought process arsenal has been really helpful, especially in positions where I don't know what to do. So a lot of times we learn about targets in the context of the opening. We learn that the f7 square and the f2 square are very weak in the first few moves of the game. And this is where beginners learn openings such as the scholar's mate, where we bring the bishop out and uh, we aim over here with the hopes of checkmating our opponent in just a few moves. We can also see these squares targeted in openings such as the fried liver, where we bring this knight up, moving it twice, but aiming at this target again on f7 next to the black king with the hopes of putting our knight there, taking that pawn and forking the rook and the queen. Now the reason this f7 square is so weak is because in this early part of the game, it's only protected by the king. And so if white is able to get some pieces up here and start an attack, this can become a real vulnerability. This is the same way we're going to think about targets in the middle game. It's a piece or a square that is not defended by very many things that we can very quickly bring our pieces in and attack while our opponent is going to have a difficult time defending that piece or defending that square. So let's take a look at this position, which frankly is early enough in the game that it might even still be considered the opening, but we're definitely not in theory here. So when looking for targets, we sort of have to evaluate the position as a whole. So material is equal, black has not castled, that's one thing I noticed right away, and it's looking like this might become an issue for black because this queen is already pinning the knight to the black king. So this knight on c6 is in fact going to be our target because we are going to be able to bring enough pieces to the attack fast enough that black won't be able to defend that knight. So we have a few options here to add more attackers to this target. We can bring the bishop up, we can bring the knight up, we can bring a rook in. I like starting with the bishop here because black has pushed this pawn and there's no way for black now to kick this bishop out and so we can just continue to pile on the pressure until eventually we're going to win this piece. If we start with the knight here, remember black has moves too, so they can actually play f6 and kick our knight around, and it's still winning for white, but it's not going to be quite as easy. The best move here is actually to castle, but uh, black can also try bringing the rook in, so we can play knight e5. Now the best move here again is to castle, but if black tries to kick our knight out, we can take, and then if the bishop takes, notice we can't take right away because counting all the way through, we're going to lose a queen here. But we take advantage of this pin again. We bring a rook in and notice it's not just the piece. It's not the knight that was here specifically. It's really the square that we are bringing all our pieces converging on this square, this target. Now, if black finally gives up and decides to castle here, we can take with the rook. I think I like this better than taking with the bishop just because it immediately attacks the queen. And after the queen moves, we can trade off rooks, attacking the queen again, queen has to take here, and we are just a simple piece up. Now this is another early, early middle game. The white king this time is not castled, and again, we're going to take advantage of that fact. This was actually a game I played a long time ago. I can't remember exactly what my rating was, but it was much lower than it is now. Um, and I was actually playing with the white pieces here, so I was the one making the mistakes. So what exactly is going on here? There's a lot of tension we need to look at to evaluate this position. So on a previous move, black had moved the pawn up to attack the knight, and I decided to do a counterattack and fork the queen and the bishop. Now let's look and see if we can find the target. Now, honestly, the king itself is kind of a target, which in turn makes this entire diagonal a target that we can be sort of looking at. Black, of course, doesn't want to lose the queen, and when you're facing a fork like this, you want to get as much material and initiative out of it as possible. So Black actually picked the right move here, which was knight takes, and after I recaptured, Black took with the bishop with this very strong diagonal check um, two pieces pointing in at the king and the knight cannot block because there is a knight here and there's three attackers and the queen would have to take and it would just be a whole mess. So I was basically forced to move my king up, 
black recaptured with the pawn and then I didn't want to be down a pawn and so I took with the queen. Uh, the unfortunate part about this is because of the terrible positioning of my king and the exposure of my queen, um, this fork ended the game pretty quickly. So going all the way back, we can consider this square on b4 to sort of be the target, but really it's this entire diagonal. Because the white king is not castled, it's incredibly exposed, and so black can afford to sort of sacrifice material actually, and you know, winning a pawn in this whole exchange, just for a chance to attack the white king and force it to come out into the open while black has a bunch of attackers on that side of the board. Now, I also talked about how squares themselves can be a target, and we sort of saw this in our first two examples, but a lot of times there's a piece on the square that you're trying to target. Sometimes though, just the square itself can be the target and you don't even have to occupy that square. It can just be enough to control it with your pawns or your pieces and that can be enough to create a positional advantage. In this case, it's more of a tactical shot that we're looking for. A lot of times in these open positions, for your long range pieces, it's kind of hard to know where to move them and where they'll be the most effective. But if you look at your opponent's bad pieces, like those that are undefended, and also the positioning of your opponent's king, that can help you find targets and then find the target square that your piece needs to be on in order for it to be the most effective. So hopefully with those hints, you were able to find that the rook on the back rank here is undefended. And it's also important to note that this bishop is just slicing through the position. And if we could get a queen in front of this bishop, we would be threatening some checkmates over here. So with those two things in mind, we should be able to find the right move here, which is moving the queen up to e5. This is an attack on the rook, and it's also threatening checkmate here, checkmate here. And black can't save the game without giving up the rook. There's no way to move the rook and also defend against checkmate. So far we've looked at a lot of big exciting plans where we win pieces or we're threatening checkmate, but in a lot of middle game positions, it's gonna look more like this. It's very quiet, it's very closed, there aren't really any tactics. So even though the position might look kind of like it's just going to be a draw, we're just going to slowly trade down pieces and trade off our pawns, it's really not that simple. You often wanna keep your pieces on the board just to create as many opportunities for complications as possible. And again, we're going to be looking for targets and then mobilizing our pieces toward attacking that target. So what could be a good target in this position? Well, immediately I'm looking at this backwards pawn on C3. A backwards pawn is one that doesn't have a friend behind it defending it. And a lot of times this can be the sort of thing that you can go after in these quieter positions. In evaluating this, it's also important to note, in this case, the color of the bishops. White has a light squared bishop, which cannot defend this pawn. And we have a dark squared bishop, which could attack this pawn. So we have this open file. And so I think immediately, probably the most natural move is to bring our rook in and start attacking this target. Because of this bishop's slightly inaccurate placement, it's not gonna be so simple for white to, you know, just bring in a rook and imitate us because the bishop is blocking the rook's protection of this pawn. So we can imagine white wants to solve the problem of this bishop being badly placed and also create some threats against our pawn so we can bring the bishop down here. So with this move, white improves the placement of their bishop and also attacks the pawn. And it's improving the placement of the bishop because now it's opening up for a rook to come in and uh, be able to defend this pawn. So we could take immediately and allow white to take, and this would be an equal trade of pawns, and that's totally fine. But a lot of times if you're trying to complicate a position, it's important to keep the tension and just continue to add attackers. So we can protect this pawn by pushing b5, and this also prevents the rook from coming down here and attacking the b pawn. So let's say white brings this rook over to protect the pawn. Another good thing about our dark squared bishop is that it can control this square where white would like to put a rook. So white is essentially forced to move the rook up to c2, and now this rook can never come in and add another layer of defense because our bishop is just going to sit here. So I'm not going to play this all the way out. It's slightly better for black in this position, but what is our plan going forward? Well, we're going to bring this rook up here or here and then bring the other rook in, create a battery against this pawn. If possible, we'd also like to bring this knight into the attack. We can't go here right now to attack the pawn because the bishop will just take and then we will have doubled pawns. But because the position's so closed, we can even consider like rerouting over here and here and bring an attack over on the queen side. And because our position is so solid, 
White's going to essentially have to spend all of their resources defending this weak backwards pawn, while we can spend multiple turns just continuing to add pressure and eventually, hopefully, win it. And one more thing to remember is that even though this is the target, there may be opportunities for other tactics just based on our continued pressure on that target. So it's important not to get hyper-focused on one thing, even though you've identified a specific target, it's important to be able to continually reevaluate the position and potentially change plans. But if you're coordinating your pieces toward a common target, that will help as you move forward in the game. Thanks so much for watching. If you like this video, please consider subscribing. It helps me out a lot. I'll see you soon.